All right, let's talk about Tucker and Dale versus Evil, which came out in 2010, directed by Eli Craig, who did Little Evil a few years back. The plot for this movie is two hillbillies are suspected of being killers by a group of paranoid college kids camping nearby. As the body count climbs, so does the fear and confusion as the college kids try to seek revenge against the two. It's a horror comedy, and it's a movie I've seen quite a few times, and I really enjoy it. And what I love about this movie is the concept. I find it to be just brilliant and a genius idea. I love how it just plays with the tropes and cliches and these characters suspect that they're typical killer hillbillies that they see in the horror movies, but they're actually just really nice guys going to a vacation home trying to fix this place up, to go fishing, and the whole time they just think they're psychopaths, but really their own friend who's the psychopath and the humor just works so well in this. I was laughing my butt off, especially in the first half. The first half is just so hilarious. Like, the kills and, like, all the suicides. They think they're all, like, in a suicide pact, killing themselves on their property. There's just so much confusion, and you're just laughing at every turn. All the kills are, like, punchlines, the way they accidentally die. So, like, the wood chipper, and when he's chasing him, chasing him with the chainsaw, like his leather face, like, there's a lot of great moments in the first half, especially. And they're over-the-top, brutal suicides. It's not, like, PG-13, it's not, like, the final girls, like, this is all on screen. This is a rated R horror comedy with gory suicides. You know, it's not, it's accidents, really, because suicide means they're doing it on purpose. Like, they're accidentally killing themselves with the wood chipper they're spearing themselves like it's very bloody another aspect of the movie that just works so well is the performances and the chemistry of you know, dale and tucker like the actors playing them are fantastic i just love how they bounce off each other their conversations and how they're trying to rationalize everything and trying to figure out what the hell is going on like they're just, they're great together. Speaking of actors, because I'm such a huge, huge Final Destination 3 fan, it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time, I liked seeing two actors in this movie from that film. Uh, the guy who plays Wendy's boyfriend and one of the tanning bed girls is in this. And we get to see her boobs. And I liked the twist they threw in towards the end about one of the characters because I was having an issue with how this person was behaving it just seemed a little over the top, and I didn't understand why they were behaving that way, and I didn't understand some of their decision making. And but then this twist happened. And I was like, "Oh, okay, that explains it." As for any negatives, I don't have a whole lot negative to say about the movie. I just I would have liked more of the movie to be from the college kids' perspective, be in their shoes for a little bit longer, maybe flesh your characters out a little bit more. I mean, they're really just in here to accidentally kill themselves. Like, we don't really get to know these kids, except for Chad and Allison. The rest are just there to accidentally kill themselves from time to time, and we don't really give a shit about them. This movie's more about Tucker and Dale, really. It's their movie. But I wish we would have spent more time in their shoes, seeing, you know, the movie play out from their perspective. And on this watch, I found that the third act just wasn't as strong as the first two acts. This movie works the best when it's them constantly, accidentally killing themselves, and there's just all this confusion, and Tucker and Dale are, you know, just trying to figure out what's happening, and, like, that's the best section of the movie when it becomes a, like, go-save-the-girl movie, that's when it loses a little bit of steam, and it's not really as funny in the third act either. But still good, just not as great as the first two thirds. And last little nitpick is that I wasn't crazy about the look of the movie. Like, it just has a weird, it kind of looks a little low budget. I don't know, it's just a little desaturated, I'm not sure. It, I just wasn't crazy about the look they went with. So final thoughts, this is one of the best horror comedies of the decade that has a clever script and lots of heart as well. Makes me laugh every time I watch it. 
it's ridiculous at times. It's over the top with the kills and Chad's character, the way he is behaving. And, you know, it loses a little bit of steam in the third act, but by no means is ever boring. So when it comes to Tucker and Dale versus Evil, I love this movie. I'm giving it four and a half out of five. So, spoilers. This movie does something that a lot of movies like to do, and that's start at the end and then jump back. Uh, you know, we see... It's kind, of, it's kind of like found footage in the beginning. We see these two walking around recording something. We don't know who these two people are, and we never see them again at the end of the movie. Um, but what we're seeing is taking place sometime after the end of the film, and these two people get killed by some half face guy, and it goes three days before. And then, of course, by the end of the movie, we realize, oh, that guy from the opening was Chad. He, come, he becomes like Two-Face at some point when the cabin explodes. So yeah, that tells us that Chad survived. Maybe we'll get a sequel at this point. I doubt it. It's been, what, 12 years now? One of the first jokes in this movie that makes me laugh every time is when Dale goes up to talk to Allison for the first time, and he's holding like a big old Grim Reaper, like scythe, and he starts chuckling and sm like uh, smiling, <laughs> like looking like an absolute creep and because that was what um his brother or his friend tucker told him to do like just smile and laugh you know it shows that you have confidence or whatever we get a classic campfire story like a 80s slasher where we go into this flashback and they have like that flashback look where they change the colors it almost looks a little black and whitish. They just make it look a little different so you know you're in flashback mode. And there's there's some brutal kills in this. Some CG, definitely, when you see the machete go right through the girl's throat. But still pretty brutal. The guy throws the saw at the guy's face. Uh, it's pretty cool. And then you get the obligatory skinny dipping. Like, again, slasher movies. Like, this movie just goes through all the tropes in the first act. Like... You know, all the scares, the fake-out friend scare, and then they hear a noise, and they're like, who's there? Who's out there? You know, all that stuff is all in the beginning. So at some point, Allison's on the rock, way far from where her friends are skinny-dipping, uh, and she falls and hits her head on the rock, and they pull her into the canoe, and of course the friends think that she is being kidnapped by these two, and they're like, hey, we got your friend! <laughs> and they start running off, they dart off into the woods, and then the next, like, probably one of the most hilarious scenes, it's shortly after this, when they first get to the cabin, and it, he is, like, sawing this tree, and there's, like, a beehive hiding inside of it, and then the bees start attacking him, and he's got this chainsaw just swinging it everywhere, looking like Leatherface, and then he's, like, running towards the other kid, and the kid thinks he's being chased by him, but of course that's not what's happening at all. Doesn't realize there's bees everywhere, and he accidentally just runs straight into, like, a low-hanging, like, sharp tree branch, goes right, right through his gut, and then, like, a bee lands on his nose, and I think we're supposed to get the impression that he is putting it together, like, oh, shit, he wasn't chasing me, it was bees. Like, I think he's realizing what was actually happening. One thing I did question was why Allison didn't, like, automatically start asking for a ride back to her friends when she woke up. Uh, they just start playing board games, but I, f I would have figured she would have been like, oh, you know, thanks for helping me, thanks for cooking me breakfast, but I need to get back to my friends. It's not like Tucker was gone with the truck, he was right outside getting attacked by bees. There's a point where they think she's digging her own grave, but of course that's not the truth. I think they're trying to uh, make an outhouse. So, and the guy just dives right into the wood chipper, head first, <laughs> missing Tucker. Um, and then the other guy falls on a spear, so we get kind of the same kill twice. So I wish that would have been changed into something a little different. It just kind of felt a little repetitive. And then the sheriff shows up, and they, of course, had that set up with the the thing that falls down, and we get this payoff, and he pushes the thing, the thing comes down, it's like this little plank, this piece of wood, and it has all these really long nails sticking out of it, and it goes right through his 
forehead and he starts like stumbling out of the cabin they're like how is he even still alive no i think he's good he'll just walk it off and then he just collapses dead and then the other dude such a moronic moment like this character is so stupid he gets the sheriff's gun and he's like i don't know how to work it and the guy uh, dale he's like oh you gotta turn the safety off and he's like pointing the barrel at his own face and of course blows his brains out and then chad picks up that gun and starts like firing what seemed like 20 bullets out of a like revolver there's not that many rounds in it but he's shooting at the cabin that he knows allison is inside of right like she is in there unconscious and he could have shot her so he's not thinking clearly obviously i mean he's not thinking about her safety in this moment they end up capturing Tucker at some point uh, after holding their dog like hostage. And then I don't think we see the dog again for a while. I forget where the dog went. Does it ever come back after this scene? Probably does. Um, but they chop off his bowling fingers. <laughs> and where do they get the rope? Do they steal it from them? I don't know why I was questioning it in the moment. But I was thinking like where the hell do they get this rope? I doubt they brought it on their camping trip. But maybe they did. I don't know. That's a stupid nitpick. I admit that. But... I was just curious. But yeah, I guess they keep him out there to lure Tuck, uh, Dale out of the cabin so that they can sneak in and get Allison while he's out looking for his friend. And they somehow set up like this Rambo trap that's like wire trigger and it makes this like wooden stake fall out of the tree. Like that seemed very, you know, elaborate for them. Like, how do they know how to do all this shit? They're stupid college kids. When they finally do reach Allison and, and see that she's okay, they start suspecting that she has Stockholm Syndrome because she's defending the hillbillies. And then we learn about Chad's history, that his mom was the chick in that flashback. And then, of course, later on, we find out that she was raped and that he's the son of those maniacs. Uh, or just the one maniac, I should say. Um... You know, and that's why he's so evil. So I guess evil is hereditary. And so then the guy just comes in the cabin with a, like, weed trimmer and hits the girl's face. And he's like, why didn't she duck? And then the chick from Final Destination 3, like, throws gasoline or, you know, something flammable on him while he's already on fire because of Chad. And then she starts, like, smoking right next to all these gas cans. The whole place blows up. And now Chad is Two-Face. Then Chad, who the whole movie was trying to get to Allison to save her, is now the villain and has captured Allison. And he's the one, ironically, like, he's the one, like, tying her up and is trying to kill her. Because in his eyes, she's, like, a traitor. And he can't stand hillbillies, so he's got her, like, tied up in this old like lumber like barn that has like this circular saw and she it's like one of those old cartoons dale gets very lucky when he throws a axe at chad and accidentally unties uh, allison i i don't think that was his intention i think that was all an accident but he unties her with the axe and then uses Chad's allergies against him. And he falls out of the barn. You think he's dead. But of course, you remember the opening and you're like, oh shit, no, he's alive. And then it flashes forward, you know, in the future sometime. And they gave his brother or his friend, I keep calling him brother. I think they're just friends. Um, his friend, a, a woman's finger. And now he has the girl. You know, it's that kind of ending where the guy gets the girl, they're going to start dating, and they're bowling, and in the background, some hillbilly is, like, assaulting a woman in public, and there's a couple of guys in the background who just aren't doing shit. Like, I'm sure that woman was in their party. They're, she's bowling in their lane. They came there together, and they're not doing shit to help her. <laughs> and, and Allison's like, should we help? And he's like, fuck that, No. I mean, think about what happened last time when he tried to help a girl. You know, it was Allison, and then the whole movie happened as a result of that. Um, so, yeah, a great ending. Um, you know, could have used a better third act, like I said, but still a fantastic, fun, very humorous, clever script. 
And what are your thoughts on this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And remember, it's all an opinion. You don't need to get butt hurt about it.